This video will show you how to correctly perform and complete storage procedures on a Rotax inboard jet package assembly. These procedures are specific to the Rotex 4Tech 1503 series package and should be used as a general reference. Use this information in conjunction with the specific information contained in the Rotax inboard jet package service manual. The following products are required to perform the storage procedure. Anti-corrosion spray, XPS fuel stabilizer, XPS lube, Dow 111, and Loctite 767 anti-seize lubricant. Check all fuel hoses for leaks. Check all fuel hose clamps for signs of corrosion or breakage. Replace the hoses and clamps as necessary. Fill the fuel tank. Add XPS fuel stabilizer to the fuel tank. XPS fuel stabilizer will prevent fuel deterioration and fuel system varnishing. Follow the instructions on the product label for correct use. Notice, improper antifreeze density can result in coolant freezing if the vehicle is stored in areas where temperatures are below freezing. This could seriously damage the engine. Use a coolant density hydrometer to test the engine coolant at the beginning of each storage period. Replace the coolant if necessary. Refer to the maintenance schedule in the service manual. Use BRP premixed coolant or a blend of 50% ethylene glycol antifreeze with 50% demineralized or distilled water. Note, use a blend of 40% coolant with 60% demineralized water to improve the cooling system efficiency when the boat is used in particularly hot weather conditions. Warning, do not drain or refill the cooling system when the engine is hot. Raise the front of the boat to help completely drain the cooling system. Remove the coolant tank cap. Place a drain pan underneath the ride plate on single engine models or heat exchangers on twin engine models. Unscrew the drain plug located at the rear of the ride plate or heat exchanger to drain the system. Dispose of used coolant per local regulations. Do not replace the drain plug at this time. Notice. Clean the cooling system anytime the coolant is replaced or in the event of an engine overheat. Refer to the correct service manual for the cooling system cleaning procedure. Apply Loctite 567 pipe sealant to the threads of the drain plug. Make sure the boat is level. Then add the recommended coolant to the coolant tank. When the coolant steadily flows from the ride plate or heat exchanger drain without air present, Install the drain plug and tighten the plug to 71 inch pounds or 8 newton meters. Continue to add coolant to the coolant tank until the level is between the minimum and maximum fill marks. Do not install the coolant tank cap at this time. Notice when the boat is out of the water, supply water to the exhaust system when running the engine. Never run the engine longer than two minutes. The driveline seal has no cooling when the boat is out of the water. Connect a garden hose to the flushing adapter at the back of the boat. When running an engine using the flushing adapter, start the engine first, then turn on the water supply. When stopping an engine, shut off the water supply first, then shut off the engine. This will prevent the exhaust system from filling with water. Run the engine at idle speed for a maximum of two minutes. Notice, do not run the engine longer than two minutes. The driveline seal will not be cooled when the boat is out of the water. Stop the engine and wait 15 minutes to let it cool down. Repeat this run-stop cycle two to three times until the thermostat opens. The water pump housing outlet hose will become hot when the thermostat opens. Check the level of coolant in the coolant tank. Refill the tank as necessary. Install the coolant tank cap. When the engine has completely cooled down, recheck the coolant level in the coolant tank. Refill the coolant tank as necessary. Engine oil should be changed at the beginning of any engine storage period. 
change the engine oil and filter as shown in the engine oil and filter change video. It is important to remove any trapped water that may have accumulated from condensation in the intercooler. Remove the intake hose from the throttle body. Start the engine. Increase the throttle to rev engine speed to 4,000 RPM several times. Stop the engine. Dry any moisture from the throttle body. Liberally spray XPS lube to lubricate the throttle body inside and out. Remove any excess XPS lube from the throttle body intake hose flange. Then reinstall the hose. Notice, failure to drain the exhaust manifold can cause severe damage to the exhaust system components. The exhaust system is self-draining. However, the exhaust manifold must be drained to avoid damage if the engine is stored in an area where temperatures are below freezing. Note, on 200 horsepower models, this procedure also drains the intercooler. Note, use the flushing adapter, a length of half inch 13 millimeter ID hose, and an air hose fitting to build a hose to assist in draining. Attach an air hose to the flushing connector located at the rear of the boat. Inject pressurized air, regulated to a maximum of 55 pounds per square inch, or 380 kilopascals, into the system until water stops flowing from the jet pump. The engine must be internally lubricated prior to storage. This process will provide corrosion protection to the internal engine components, such as intake valves and exhaust valves, pistons, and cylinders. Disconnect the ignition coil connectors. Remove the ignition coils. Clean the area around the ignition coils. This will prevent dirt from falling into the cylinders when the spark plugs are removed. Loosen the spark plugs. Use an ignition coil to remove the spark plugs. Spray XPS lube into each spark plug hole. Warning: Never crank the engine or check for ignition spark when an open coil or spark plug is in the engine compartment. The ignition spark may cause fuel vapors to ignite. Crank the engine in drowned mode to prevent the ignition coils and fuel injectors from functioning. To activate drown mode, make sure the engine is off. Install the tether cord on the engine cutoff switch. Make sure the throttle shift lever is in the neutral position. Have an assistant move the throttle position sensor to the wide open throttle position and hold it in this position. Note, the ECM will allow engine cranking while preventing fuel injection and ignition operation. Do not crank the engine for more than 10 seconds. Crank the engine to distribute the oil onto the walls of the cylinders. Release the throttle position sensor to allow the ECM to return to normal operation mode. Apply Loctite 767 anti-seize lubricant on the spark plug threads, then reinstall the spark plugs. Apply Dow Corning 111 on the seal area of the ignition coil that touches the spark plug hole. Then reinstall the ignition coils. Ensure the seal seats properly with the top of the valve cover. Reconnect the ignition coil connectors. Then reinstall any other parts which have been removed. Turn the battery switch to the off position. Then disconnect the battery cables from the battery and remove the battery from the boat. Store the battery in a cool, dry location. Clean the bilge and rinse thoroughly. Wipe up any residual water in the engine compartment. Apply XPS lube over all metallic components in the engine compartment.